Welcome back students. In our previous video, we have learned about the hold operation of SRAM and we have also learned the read operation of the SRAM. So, in this video, we will start with the write operation of SRAM. In the write operation, the following steps have to be performed. So, let us start with the first point that WL is equal to 1. So, word line value is 1. So, once your word line value will be 1, it means this input and this input is 1. So, that will make your transistor M5 on and your M6 also on. So, once they are on, it will behave as a short circuit. So, what happens? Your bit line bar and bit line are now connected to, to our latch circuit. So, that is the first step. So, this is again written here. Once your WL value is 1, the excess transistors that is M5 and M6 are turned on. Then what happens? Whatever value you want to write, those values you have to mention at BL and BL bar. And also it is very important, the values that you are giving to bit line and bit line bar, they must be complementary. Okay, this is very important. So, if you are giving BL value as 1, then BL bar must be 0 or vice versa. Let us suppose initially the values here are 0 and 1. And once you are doing write operation, I want to modify the contents of this particular memory. I want suppose this side as uh, 1 and I want this side as 0. So, the point is whatever values you want to modify, those values you have to basically supply in the bit line because these bit lines are acting as inputs during the write operation. Okay? So, the modified values you have to give to bit line and bit line bar. And since your WL is already 1, so it means your M5 is on and your M6 is on. So, they are acting as a short circuit only. So, you can assume here already there is a connection like this. So, your bit line and bit line bar are already connected to the latch. So, what happens when your value is 1 here? So, you can see here due to this 1, the value is here. Now, this 1 is acting as an input for this inverter. And when this input is 1, so the output of this inverter number 1 will be forced to get the value 0. And furthermore, since BL is also 0 from the right side, so this 0 is also pushing here, this 0 is also being pushed as an input and this 0 is acting as input for inverter number 2. So, because this input is 0, so, this output would also be forced to 1. So, basically what is happening? This bit line bar is helping this bit line to be 0 and this bit line is also helping this bit line bar side to be 1. So, in this way they are basically helping each other and due to this what happens? The circuit operation becomes very fast. So, that is the reason also why we are using bit line as well as bit line bar. Okay. Although, if we are having only BL, still then we would be able to explain the operation. But using bit line and bit line bar simply makes operation faster. So, this is what is written here also. The values that you want to provide, you have to apply those values at both bit line and bit line bar. And remember, the values must be complementary to one another. And once you will do it, then you will be able to successfully modify the contents like I have told you here and the data would be latched inside the set of two inverters with new values. So, that completes the write operation also. And then the last thing that I want you to know regarding SRAM is here there are two different diagrams. This is a diagram we have already studied. Now, if you will compare this diagram with the second one, there is one change. The inverter here, if you see the inverter, it is all made of transistors or you can say it is made of NMOS plus PMOS. This is your PMOS and this is your NMOS. Now, if you look at this diagram, in this diagram what is what is being done is your PMOS has been replaced with the res. So, this is also a uh, memory. This will also uh, behave same in terms of read write op operation. But the problem is in the power dissipation. If you are having a circuit that is made of only and only CMOS, then power dissipation is less. While as if you are having a resistor instead of PMOS, 
then your power dissipation is going to get increased. Now, why is it so? Uh, for that, uh, you have to again recall what I told you in the previous video. If suppose we talk about the inverter, if suppose I talk about the inverter, this is VDD and ground. This is my input, this is my output. So, how does inverter work? If suppose your input is 0, that time PMOS turns on and NMOS turns off. And if your input is 1, then your PMOS turns off and NMOS turns on. So, you can see at a time only one transistor is on. So, let us take a first case when input was 0. So, when input is 0, you can see that time your NMOS, your NMOS turns off. So, your diagram would look like this. Your input is connected here as 0. So, this is VDD and this is out. So, VDD is directly connected to out only and this was your ground. And when input is 1, that time what happens? Your VDD is disconnected and your output is connected to ground that time. So, you can see what is good thing in CMOS. At a time only one transistor is working. You can see if input is 0, then NMOS is off. If input is 1, then PMOS is off. So, there is whether the input is 0 or 1 there is never a connection between VDD and ground and you can see here also there is no connection between VDD and ground and when there is no connection that means there is no power dissipation. Okay, That is why we say in a CMOS there is least power dissipation, but this is not the case if suppose you will replace one of the uh, transistors with the resistor. Okay, Now, if you will have a circuit like this, okay, you provide here input, you provide here output. If you will see its operation, this will also behave as an inverter only, but the problem is in both the cases it would be connected to the ground. Suppose your input is 0, if input is 0 and this is only NMOS you are using, if input is 0, it means transistor will not work, but then your connection is like this. This is VDD and this is out. And the second time is when suppose input is 1. When input is 1, you see the resistor is also here. Now, see when input is 1, this is VDD, this is R and this NMOS is working. So, this is acting as a short. This is ground. So, you can see here there is a connection between VD and ground. So, it will lead to the power dissipation. Okay. Now, see this condition never happens in the CMOS. So, that is actually the problem, but there are obvious advantages. If you are having 6 transistors, its size becomes larger, but if you are having only 4 transistors, then size becomes little bit lesser. So, both the diagrams are used for making the SRAM. So, it all depends on the priority. If suppose you are having tight constraint on the power, then you must go for 6 transistor design and if power is not the concern then you can go for the 4 transistor SRAM also. And if it is made of only CMOS then its noise margin becomes best because uh, there is a full swing of voltage where it operates while as if it is 4 transistor then it becomes little bit lesser. So, with all these differences uh, we have completed the working of SRAM. In the next video we will be discussing about the working of DRAM. Till then God bless you all and thank you.